Hello, my friends, and welcome to a lesson about circles. You know, they're pretty amazing, and they're all over the place. I bet when you look in the mirror in your eyes, you see one. When you open your mouth wide to take a bite, you might see one. And when you look up at the sky, you probably see a couple too. But how did humans come to find the way to make circles? How did we observe circles in creation and then find our own ways to make them? Well, I want to bring you back in time to the time of nomadic peoples. Nomadic peoples, they traveled a lot. They went all over the land. Sometimes they stayed in a spot for a little while and moved on. Maybe they'd stay in some spots for a longer while, depending on what they were looking for and what they expected or needed. But you know, they brought animals along with them like cows and goats, and those animals provided them with food. But what do you do to keep your animals from wandering away? Build a fence, right? But how would that work if you were nomadic and you're traveling constantly? Do you want to take those fences, pack them up on your back, and carry them around? No, there's a much easier way. Maybe we could set a stake in the ground and take our friendly cow or goat and tie them to that stake so they can't wander too far off. Well, we think this might have been something that nomadic people would do from time to time. Tie up their livestock so they wouldn't wander away. It's easy to untie it and then lead it on to the next place. But they may have noticed something as well. You see, that livestock, that animal, will wander around and eat grass and scuff up the ground but it can only wander as far away as the rope that's tying it to that tree or stake. So it continues to wander around, moo, moo, eating up all the grass in here, all the grass over there, and eventually it runs out of grass on the inside, so it starts to wander as far away as it can, as far away as it can, and eventually after going as far away as it can, for as long as it can, it starts to create a pattern. And maybe you're even seeing that pattern start to create. Look at that. It's so curvy. It looks just like a, a circle. We think this might have been one of the ways that people started to find out how to create their own circles. So friends, what did you think of that? Everything's coming full circle now, right? Well, it's time for us to go find a circle and to make one and to learn about its parts. Because just like a quadrilateral or a triangle or even any other type of polygon, a circle has parts. What do you need? A piece of paper, a straight edge or a ruler may come in very handy, and colored pencils. You'll also need to go and find something circular. It could be anything, but you want it to take up a good amount of space on this paper. I found this bowl. Well, hit pause for a moment, go find that object, come back, and let's do this. Okay. Go ahead and take your object and place it on your paper. Grab a beautiful looking color and trace that circle. If you have an object that's very valuable or precious to your family, please ask permission and be so careful with it or try to find something else. All right, look at that circle. It's beautiful. Now, ancient humans didn't have the ability to just grab something circular and make it like that, but we do. How fascinating. And actually, that line that you just created is so important. So important, let's decorate it.
I use little trees to decorate mine. Maybe you used a pattern or something else. But what we just did is we went around what's called the circumference of the circle. The circumference is the distance around the circle. It's sort of like perimeter for a polygon, but we call it circumference for a circle. So maybe in that same color we just decorated in, let's label the circumference. And it goes all the way around the entire circle. So feel free to really emphasize that it goes all the way around the entire circle. And maybe you're even interested in how to find circumference, and there are lessons on that. It's a pretty cool thing to be able to do. But there's something else here. Hmm. Let's take our straight edge. And the best that we can, let's try to cut our circle in half. This can be sort of hard. What we really want to do is try to find a line that splits it perfectly in half. Do you think you've got it? I think I'm pretty close. Look at that. I'm going to take a line and cut that circle in half. Now, halfway on that line, I want you to make something really special. I'm going to make a sun. I know I made it sort of wibbly and wobbly there, but there's a reason for that. I'm thinking about my design as well. But that right there is the center of your circle. And why don't we label it? Because that center point is going to help you find some other things. In fact, that line you drew right through the center, it goes from one side of the circumference to the other side of the circumference going right through the center. And it's called the diameter. I'm going to decorate the diameter and then I'm going to label it. And now maybe you see why I made that sun so shimmery, because it's actually partly a reflection. You can make these beautiful drawings a world if you wish. In fact, I'm gonna take some time to shade in my water. Okay, and yours may look completely different and take your time with it. Pause in this video if you need to, to spend some time making all of those look beautiful. I'm going to add just a little bit more color and then I'm going to label that diameter. I really want to emphasize what it is. So I'm going to make sure to really mark it with some kind of beautiful pattern so I know which exact thing I'm doing and also using different colors for different parts. So, the diameter. It goes from one side of the circumference straight through the center and to the other side. But sometimes we don't want to go all the way to the other side. What if we just wanted to go halfway? Huh. That's a different part. Let's go ahead and make a mark or a line or pattern that goes from the center point to the circumference. Not all the way from one side of the circumference to the other, but just from the center to the circumference. I am going to draw dolphins jumping out of the water to signify that part. And you can use anything that you like to symbolize this part as well, because it is another part. And the name of that part is the radius. The radius is half the diameter. It goes from the center point to the circumference. And those dolphins just help show us the way. 
But the diameter also does something else here. It splits our circumference in half. And that creates a new part for us too. So that half of the circumference, let's give that something special. Ooh, I've got that sun sort of setting or rising. So I think for what we call the semi-circumference, I'm going to make that part of the line be part of the sunset. So you can have a lot of fun with how you show these different parts. And then maybe you'd even like to go back and try some of those other lessons of parts to try to see how you might design those to make them look really cool. Let's really make sure we emphasize that line up there. And then let's label it as the semi circumference. Semi means half. Semi circumference. And there's one more thing I want to show you. There is a line we can make in the circle that connects from one point on the circumference to another point, but does not go through the center. And maybe I'll put that one, ooh, down in the depths of the ocean, and I'll choose another color. Ooh, how about, well, we haven't used a red yet, at least not a bright red. And let's make that a whole fleet of eel, maybe. Red eels swimming through the water, following each other nose to tail to show us yet another part of the circle, the chord. And this is spelled just like a chord that you would play on a piano, but this is a line that extends from one point on the circumference to another without going through the center point. And so there we have a whole circle and all of its beautiful parts. And hey, it looks pretty beautiful too. Maybe you should go out and find as many circles as you can and try to find all these parts. Hey, if you go outside with a piece of chalk, you could be drawing some of these parts on circles. Ask permission. If you're going to draw on your parents' tire, make sure you let them know it's chalk and it will come off. But of course, always use respect and courtesy when marking anything else. Another option is you could create a list of all the circles in your house. I mean, here's a bowl and a glass and a glue stick and a singing bowl, even the striker for the singing bowl. Oh my goodness, my grammar thing. Oh, this, this pillow here. Oh, there's a bug catcher with a circle and I've got a basket full of beads and oh my goodness, the button on my iPad. And there are so many circles in our world. It's time for you to go find them. Have fun, friends.